Hello, my name is Collection Connoisseur. I collect digital thingamabobs and video games, and today I'm playing Monster Train. Now, this time on Monster Train, we are going to be playing with the Wormkin as the primary and the Melting. Where's the Melting? The Melting as the secondary clan. But for the Wormkin, I will be using my new champion that I've never played with. So then. The Wormkin is at level 6, the Melting Remnant is at level 4. Presumably this is going to get them to level 5, which means we'll unlock another champion. Always have new champions to play as. Covenant rank 9 means the Pyre takes 20 damage at the start of the turn. Let's go. Start of the turn? Start of the run. Start of the turn would be terrible. So we do have a Bogfly. Bogflies I have avoided taking because they seem pretty bad, but we do have a bog fly this time. Maybe they will be decent with the Melting Remnant as a secondary clan, we'll see. The Molting Encasement, this is not the one we played with last time, has a similar art though. This applies Stealth 2 to friendly units, that could be quite good. And then Extract 3, Apply Melee Weakness 3. So we have a lot of reason to to build up Echoes. I think that's pretty usual when you're playing as the Wormkin. Let's click OK and see what our Champion and Starting card does, because we don't have Fracture this time. So we've got the Dregs. I do really like the Dregs. Of the starting cards that you start out with, I think the Dregs are my favorite. We have Echo Break. Infused, deal one damage per charged Echo. That actually seems pretty good. That's kind of like Torch, but it seems like it might be better than Torch. And of course, having targeted damage spells is really nice. Of course, we have the Train Stewards. Let's ignore those. Echo Right has very little health. That means that nothing, nothing in our starting deck has much health. That's a little bit scary. Everything wants to be a back unit. Let's see what our champion upgrades to. The Marsh Lord, summon one Bog Chrysalis. Bog Chrysalis is an egg unit. Ooh, I don't know if I like the egg units that much. Hatch, summon two Bog Fly units. That would mean that we need to have tons and tons of charged echoes. So the Bog Chrysalis comes with 20 health. And Etch, remove one shell from eggs. Etch triggers when this when a card is consumed on this floor. So you can basically grow your eggs without using your charged echoes, as long as you use consume cards, which we have none of. Okay. Or the Shell Smith. Apply armor 4 to friendly units. Again, this is an etch, so it requires consume spells, which we still don't have. Huh. Makes it pretty hard to decide what to do here. None of these really work with my starting deck. Like, none of them work with my starting deck that much. I think I'm going to go down the Marsh Lord because I've been avoiding eggs so much, this will force me to actually do something with eggs. Let's learn how to actually use the eggs from the Wormkin. Advanced Prototypes. Steward units get plus 5 attack, plus 5 health, damage shield 2, and multi-strike 1. You know? Is this the run that we actually master a train steward? It could be. Because Advanced Prototype makes those Train Stewards much, much better. Or we could get spells get an extra upgrade slot. So, I've been avoiding the Train Stewards, but Advanced Prototype makes it so that I might not want to avoid the Train Stewards in my deck. Hmm. I don't know about that. I think I'm going to take it because at least it's very good early. It might be, it might be the artifact that I take so that my deck gets built 
I have some time to really build the deck because my starting deck is much better. Retribution? Sure. That's going to be terrible with a lot of the things in my starting deck, aka the dregs and my champion. But still, it's going to be good with other things. So we do want Echo Right somewhere. If we put anything at the bottom, it dies pretty quickly. Well, yeah, it does, even with the molten encasement because of the spikes I just put on. Things are not great here. Do we put units at the bottom anyway? I think that the train stewards are really going to be what what wins this first one, so I am going to put units at the bottom anyway. The dregs are going to take out one unit per dreg and then die, apparently. All right, the molten encasement goes in front, definitely. Then we put a dreg to to just die, but kill a unit. We put Echo right in the back. I wonder where the egg comes in, the bog chrysalis. It comes in front, okay. It's kind of nice that it comes in front there. And then Echo Break does defeat one of these. So let's defeat one of those. Okay, so this is dying. It applies stealth too. That means that this one is only dying because of thorns, because of the spikes on these units. And we kill all but one of the clergymen. Now then, bog flies. Bog flies are pretty bad. They die very quickly. However, they can take out a collector. No, no, they can't unless we put something else here that has charged echoes. <laughs> okay. Down at the bottom, we can play two echo breaks. Yeah, two Echo Breaks at the bottom seems pretty nice. I do want to take out the Train Steward, so I think I'm going to put the two Bog Flies here. One of them is going to just die. Actually, that takes out the Collector, just like that. So we could use the other Bog Fly at the bottom. It's only okay. We can put it behind the egg, though. The Bog Chrysalis has more health. Oh, and it's stealth. It's stealth, which means it doesn't protect anybody. Interesting. So therefore, the Bog Fly goes up here anyway. Yeah, Bog Fly goes up there anyway, because it would just die down here because both of these have stealth. And then we kill two of these. Two of the clergymen down. Gotta get that money from the Collector. And of course our Champion is dying, by the way. Not that the Champion does much, the Champion just has all of the attack value that our deck has in it. So you, you are dying from being attacked. We can stop that with an Echo Break. If we put a Dreg down here, Let's put a drag down here so that we hatch the Bog Chrysalis. That's the only reason I'm putting a drag down here, though. So you're going to hatch. We want a drag up here. We'll put it in the back because it has... Actually, do we even want a drag there? We definitely want the Echo Break. Echo Break does that. Now you burn out, you attack. Do we want a dreg anywhere, knowing that it will burn out really fast? I don't think we do. So where do we put our train stewards? They don't fit many places. They're still a bad unit. One train steward is going to go there. One train steward is going to go here. And then I won't play the dreg. I think I will play it next time around so it actually gets to do some damage to the boss. That boss, right there. Oh no, we don't have any space to put the Molten Encasement. <laughs> and of course, Force Contamination doesn't do anything because we can't extract three. 
so what happens here and why do they have so much health wait a minute what do you do what what was the did the bog chrysalis oh you know what anything any enchantment any upgrade or buff that's on the egg goes also to the units that come out of the egg so these normally only have five health but they have more because the egg had more health how interesting that is very good to know i'm going to put this right here and a train steward behind it and then i guess we'll put another train steward up here we are ready for you to get to the next floor Granted, my units are dying while attacking your your clergyman. And this unit just doesn't attack <laughs> because we didn't have any charged echoes there. Oh, how about that? We can create tons of charged echoes. We already win, though. Let's just win with our train spirits. So our deck is really bad. The only thing that's propping it up is the train steward, and the train stewards are not actually that great, even with this advanced prototype. But they're really good right now. So there's shelter. The fact that the shelter is infused is really important here. Echo snare seems pretty bad when we have egg units that consume the charged echoes. I guess shelter is good. Extract two. I don't think I can take another extract card right now. So let's take the shelter. And giraffe. Infused burnout one, multi-strike one. It only lasts one. <laughs> That's actually pretty bad. Restore 15 health and apply burnout three to a friendly unit. That is only good if we have a unit that we can do something with. Draft seems like just a, a slightly upgraded version of Dreg. <laughs> only slightly. Not even if you consider the Burnout 1. I think I'm going to take the Entombed Explosive again. It did good stuff for us last time. We do need Reform for it to do much else, though. Now, we do have a lot of units... Only a few spells. Let's go to the Merchant of Steel, which can upgrade our monsters. First of Kin has Etch. Etch is not great. We could get another Bog Chrysalis. Bog Chrysalis goes really well with Echo Rite if we get any consume spells other than Shelter. Doesn't seem great yet. I think first of kin is what we want. Yep, first of kin. So speed stone, strength stone, battle stone. Would we use the speed stone? I mean, first of kin likes to have a speed stone. The train stewards could have a speed stone. I don't know how much we care about speedstone. I guess the bog flies care about having a speedstone if they actually have much else. I think I'm going to make hmm hard choices. If I were to purge a card, what would I purge? I almost don't want to purge any of the starting spells, the starting cards because they're infused and we really need them to be infused still want to remove a train steward could remove a bog fly the bog flies aren't the best or i could upgrade a bog fly <laughs> or we could upgrade a train steward hmm what if we gave a strength stone 
to a train steward and gave it quick. I don't know. I don't like that. <laughs> this is hard. What do I actually upgrade? What do I like out of my starting deck? The first of kin is not bad. So the bog flies could be sacrificed. They don't do too much sacrificed, though. Hmm. I went here because I have mainly units, but now that I'm here, I don't know what units I actually want to upgrade. <laughs> let's make let's make one train steward a good train steward. So you're getting that. Speedstone, I kind of want to put on first of kin, but also putting it on a train steward that has multi-strike one and more attack is kind of nice too. But I like it on first of kin. Put it on first of kin. And then Battlestone, maybe we put this on the on the same train steward. Are we going to put it on a bog fly or a dreg? We're not gonna put it on a molten encasement. Could put it on a different train steward. Let's put it on the same train steward. So we've got one upgraded train steward. And then reroll. Okay, Wickstone. I like the Wickstone on one of the dregs. Give it more burnout. And then let's do another Strength Stone on a Train Steward. All right, we're actually using our Train Stewards this time. Crazy. I don't know of anything that I want to sacrifice, but there could be a spell thing that I want. Like the Purge Stone. We could purge a spell. <laughs> we could purge Forced Contamination. Don't want to purge Shelter. We could purge one of the Echo Breaks. Or we could apply Twin Stone to one of the Echo Breaks. Or Shelter. I do recall having a a shelter with a twin stone on it and really liking it. We would have to be able to get it back from consume for me to really want to do that again. We're going to wait. We're going to wait to see what deck we have before we do this. Let's go. Non-boss enemy units get four attack. Perfectly fine. Let's go. Now you have haste. Haste is bad. None of my first cards have infused on them, which is not what we like to see. Don't like that haste. Don't mind putting the first of kin at the bottom, but maybe we should put first of kin at the top and put other things at the bottom. How about that? First of kin goes at the top. You're probably going to have a buddy train steward. Echo right is going to go at the bottom. We cannot play molten encasement now. Never mind. Echo right, you're going to go in the middle. We're going to figure out what to do at the bottom later, apparently. And there's going to be a bog fly here too. Okay. Not a great first turn. And the collector showed up at the top, not where I wanted it to. I guess we'll have a train steward at the top, the lesser of the two train stewards we have at the top. Damage shield 2. Still want him in the back. You're going to get up to the pyre and deal 5 damage. It's sad, but there's no way for me to stop it now. Let's put a train steward here and put a drag in front of it. One drag in front of it. Yeah, we're going to put a drag up here because of the infused. 
Let's put this... No. Yeah, let's put this drag up here. So that we actually have a charged echo to go into that egg. And then we're going to put two drags here. One of them in the front to take nine damage. And one of them in the back to kill another unit. Do we need to do that? Because you're going to haste yourself up here, and then both of those units will die. So never mind. The drag could go in the front. Unless we want, want to keep it for next turn. Let's keep it for next turn. There goes the collector with money. Very sad. How'd you make it all the way to the... Oh no, never mind. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong one. I thought it was this one that made it to, to the top. It was the one we knew that was going to make it to the top that made it there. So then... We can put another... Train Steward at the bottom. We are actually kind of out of room. So a Train Steward goes at the bottom because... We don't have enough room elsewhere. And then we do the shelter here so that we take a, a couple shells off that egg. One because of the consume. And then we do not have space for anything else. Yeah, no space for anything else. Okay. How does the final wave go? We're actually doing okay, and if I put the Molten Encasement in front, we're doing even better. Yeah, let's do that. So Molten Encasement in front. We will definitely use Echo Break here. And then we win. How about that? Win with the Train Stewards. How weird. The Molten Encasement is helping. And we took five damage from that one conduit. Infused Attuned Extract 2. Not... not what we want. There's another Consume card, the Shelter. There's another Extract. I don't think we can take these. I mean, I like the Shelter. I like the shelter, but I don't think we can take it when, when it's not infused, because we really need it to be infused. Hallowed Drippings. Infused Consume. So far, so good. Apply Burnout 5 to friendly Burnout units. Okay, we'll take it. It does something. Don't really like the Bog Chrysalis. We could take a Paraffin Thug. I think the Bog Chrysalis might be a better choice, though. Yeah, I think the Bog Chrysalis is a better choice. It's just a weird choice. We need to get something that causes our egg units to be better. A Wormkin unit probably doesn't do it. Merchant of Magic might do it. We definitely don't want to duplicate a card, so I guess we're going to the left here. We can heal up our Pyre. The fact that we started 20 health down is only causing us to be 5 health down right now. Concealed Caverns. Give me something. I need something. I have no idea what that is. This is new. Shards of the Pyre. Remnants of the once great beacon of hell are strewn about. When it was extinguished, the Shattered Pyre must have been ejected through these hell vents across all nine rings. Taking advantage of the opportunity, some entrepreneurial soul decided to set up a still near the hell vent, converting what energy remained into potent liquids. While the owner must have heard you coming and scrambled off, some of their product remains. Do you take a swig? So we could get a Strength Stone. That's very small benefit. We could get... Bone Shine, which heals the pyre once. 
because it has purge on it. Bone shine seems pretty bad. Or straight from the still, bone rattler. Add plus five X attack to your pyre. Is that good? I have no idea if that's good. <laughs> I think I'm going to do the strength stone. It's a pretty small benefit. But the bone rattler? Is the bone rattler actually good? It has consume on it. I guess I'm going to take it because it has consume on it. And we have some etch some etch units. But uh, I didn't like it. So we are definitely taking an Ember Stone. We do not have enough gold to re-roll and take more, which really hurts. So the Ember Stone. I want one of these Echo Breaks to cost zero, I think. I think. I guess both of these are going on the same one, so one of the Echo Breaks is going to cost zero and do ten more damage. And we we couldn't afford a stack stone even at the beginning. Ick. Upgrade a spell with ten magic power and piercing, or fifteen magic power that would be significant if we had any reasonable spell dealing damage, but we just have the Echo Breaks dealing damage. And sacrificing a unit still seems like it's not doing much for us. Okay, well, don't feel good about this one so far. Let's keep going. Explosive Sigil. Enemy units deal one damage to the front unit on death. I don't think I've seen that before. Okay. That's a new one to me. A new battle effect. So he puts out these constructed explosives, which essentially do 11 because of the explosive sigil. We can put Echo Right and the Bog Chrysalis together. That would probably be good. On the other hand, the First of Kin is really good to get out early. What do I want at the bottom? Maybe what we do is we pass on the first of kin initially, and we play the rest of the cards. So what does Shell say? At the end of turn, remove Echoes from the floor to remove Shell from the front from the front unit with Shell. Oh, so if we have two, if we have two eggs. Only the front egg is getting used. I think I want to play all of my cards that I can. So we're going to do this. We're going to put this one behind it because it's the lesser egg. And we're going to play both train stewards at the bottom. And sorry, first of kin, you will have to come back next time. We are cleaning up at the bottom until the train stewards die, which might be very fast, actually. The Bone Rattler. All right. Well, Hallowed Drippings does remove Shell, because that's what the Etch does. So I could do Hallowed Drippings here on the second floor. This front train steward is dying no matter what even if I defeat one of these units. That's not good. I will still play an Echo Break somewhere. Could play the Echo Break here, just destroy the Constructed Explosive. But I think we're going to do this, because it removes essentially three shell total. Could still play the Echo Break here. I will do so. And then this train steward is going to go at the top. 
And Bone Rattler will remove more shell and add some attack value to the pyre. All right, I believe we hatched a, a thing though. Now the main problem is having two eggs there means that the infused echoes don't stay. Oh man, we need ways to get more echoes. A lot more echoes, actually. The entombed explosive is perfect at the bottom here. And shelter is good there. All right, let's start with those two things. So entombed explosive goes here. The echo break can go here and defeat one of these units. Let's do that. And then shelter can remove more shell from you and apply armor to my units up here. Great, so you are going to hatch as well, but you're going to hatch by removing all the charged echoes, which means the bog flies that come out are going to be pretty bad. You know what? That's as best we can do, I guess. This... This is going to try to hit the train steward. Putting a bog fly in front would kill the bog fly? That's okay. Because what would happen is you hit him, he explodes, killing you. You hit the bog fly doing nothing, and then this one explodes, which kills the bog fly. And then you retain your one damage shield. I like that we were able to hatch both eggs. What I don't like is that that leaves all of those units having zero attack. You are exploding up there. You are dying. We could stop that with Echo Breaks. Nothing is going wrong here except that nobody is attacking him except for Echo Right. That's fine. You are removing one damage shield at the top there. I don't like that. So what we're going to do is put this train steward down here, play an echo break, dealing one damage to something. And then we play, should have played the drag first, actually. We're going to play a drag. Those all die, the drag dies. Let's do an echo break here so that these actually have attack value. And then we could play a drag up here. It could even take the brunt of the explosion. Let's do that. You take the explosion, keep the damage shield on the train steward. So are we solving this fight? Technically, yes, but not by a lot. Nothing is really going wrong there. And we can't play any dregs. We can't play anything up there, in fact. Playing a Molten Encasement down here seems really nice. Let's do that. Molten Encasement at the bottom. Kind of wish we could play both of them at the bottom, but we can't fit them. And then let's play Molten Encasement here too. And a bog fly and a dreg to make the bog fly better, basically. Dealing a little bit of damage to Daedalus there. So my units have stealth. We cannot fit the first of kin anywhere. Hmm, that's kind of a problem, right? What we can do is we can actually play Forced Contamination. Ooh, that's nice. I would like to do essentially five damage to you. So this one would do three. 
what we could do is play these two on the boss, and then that one would do five damage. Great. That means the train steward... No, we want to do more than that, because this train... Oh no, this train steward has stealth. Great. So it will... It will kill this one if we do 10 damage to this one. Whoops. Because he has 30 health. 10 damage. So I guess what we want to do is... This one to you. This one to you. This one to... I just realized... Yeah. This one to you. And then we do Force Contamination. Applying spell melee weakness three to the boss. There we go. Doing a whole lot more damage to the boss. Miscalculated on that front unit though, apparently. Don't know where the calculation went wrong, but it dealt one more attack to that front unit than I thought I needed to. Either way, we win right here, so let's win. We've made it past the first three battles without much trouble, but I am still afraid for this deck. Still afraid for this deck, definitely. Echoes of the Past is so good if you can produce enough of the Echoes. Ooh, Accelerated Incubation. We want that. We want that a lot. Let's take it. Glug Cider takes up four spaces. Inspire, restore five health. Revenge, apply five reap to the attacked unit. Extract four. That doesn't seem good. Lady of the House is not bad. And then I do like my Paraffin Thug, but not going to play, it, play with it this time. I think I like Lady of the House. And I believe we need the Light of Seraph again. Because we have so many units that we want to play. Okay, what do we need? I'm not sure. Removing two cards definitely helps. Merchant of Steel... Upgrading this Bog Chrysalis that we added would be good. Don't really like the Bog Flies that are just in our deck. Yeah, let's go to the right. And the first thing I want to do is upgrade the Champion. See what happens with the Champion. So, same two options. The Marsh Lord, but it's number two. Summon a Kinhos Vessel. Kinhos Vessel? Isn't that a different thing? Shell 8. Oh no, <laughs> that's a different one, with even more shell. But the etch removes two shell from eggs. Hmm. Okay. Still pretty decent. I think I'm going to take it. Go down the Marsh Lord. And then let's gain an artifact. The Pyre gets 15 attack. When you play your third card of the turn, draw one. This is like drawing an extra card every turn. Seems nice. Seems nice, especially because we do have a number of zero-cost cards in the deck. So we would just draw cards. Draw an extra card every turn, or Boon of a Blacksmith clearly draw an extra card every turn. Remnant unit. Harvest could be good in our deck, because our, our creatures die. Considering how, how much I dislike the units in the deck, I feel like adding more, but that could be bad. Let's, let's play with the Wickless Baron. At least what we could do is sacrifice him. So what are we removing? I'm very much considering removing a bog fly. 
Yeah. The bog fly is quite bad. Remove a bog fly. Do I want to remove the second bog fly? Because we just don't gain enough echoes for them to be any good. Or I could remove one of the train stewards, which are taking up more space than bog flies. No, let's remove the other bog fly. We'll get the bog fly out of the bog chrysalis. Now, value stone, what could that go on? It could go on bone rattler. <laughs> not, not really what we need. 10 magic power and piercing could go on echo break. We, we don't have any pack shards yet. But really, I was thinking about sacrificing... Sacrificing one of our units, such as the Wickless Baron, and putting him on something else. We could even put him on a train steward. Crazy. I definitely don't want to sacrifice the Bog Chrysalis. I think we do sacrifice the Wickless Baron and put him on the upgraded train steward. Yeah, let's do that. Sacrifice the Wickless Baron. And put him on Train Steward that has Damage Shield, Multi-Strike. And more health. Okay, that Train Steward is now a good unit. And we did spend... We did get enough pack shards that were not quite on target, but we can easily get there. Yeah, we can easily get there. Let's keep going. Non-boss enemies enter with spikes four. How bad is that? It kills the dregs immediately. The, the first of kin is just fine. The train stewards are hurt by that. I think I'm still going to turn it on. I need something to make this deck better, and I think a random artifact will help. And if we lose some damage on the pyre, I'm fine. We just need to survive. Now, where are we putting Echo right this time? I don't actually know what what the, the Kinhos Vessel does, because it just tells you the name of the card that it summons here, but I don't get to see... I don't get to see what that card is. I also don't know how much space it takes up. Oh, the Kinhos Vessel takes up one. So we could put it down at the bottom. We would have an egg at the bottom. We could have two eggs at the bottom, and we could accelerate their incubation. I like it. Let's put this at the bottom. And what does Kinho's Poopa look like? Kinho's Poopa takes up two space. Armor 20, multi-strike one, apply reap one to enemy units when it strikes it. Doesn't have much health, but it will actually have a lot because this was summoned with a lot of health. Not bad. And then we could have bog fly units down here too. Do we want Lady of the House down here? She would burn out, but while she's here, we would have another charged echo. Either way, we're going to do this. Oh, but that will break open this egg immediately, won't it? Wait a minute, what's happening? Why is this dying? This removes three shell from eggs. Oh, because we upgraded this, so the etch removes two shell, so this would upgrade immediately. Let's put the Lady of the House down here before we do that. Because I don't think we'll have space if we don't. Ooh, and we get a drag that we can place on a different floor. 
All right, let's do the accelerated incubation. Great, we already have bog fly units. Kind of wish I had put the lady of the house in front. That's okay. And up here we can add our wickless baron, train steward. Put the drag in front. That way you get stronger when he dies. And I believe that works even when he burns out. I think so. The bogfly units are almost dead because of the thorns. It's kind of what you get when you get bogfly units, though. We can use Echo Break basically just to hatch this egg and make the bogfly units kill themselves. I don't know if I like the fact that they just kill themselves, but the other part I like. The first of kin, I think I want to add here. And then we can't do anything else because the first of kin takes three energy. Which means I really need more energy so that I can play that first of kin more reliably. Well then, we can do a lot this turn. Which order do we want to do things in? So the spells go at the bottom, the dregs go elsewhere. Since the dregs go elsewhere, I'm going to put one of them here. This one has more burnout, but still that's not quite enough. Let's start doing some echo breaks down here. And I guess we'll just hit the back one with the echo breaks. I want to do the, do the shelter last because I want the armor more than I want the damage from the echo breaks. We got another drag. Well, at least I didn't draw them next turn, I guess. Okay, now the bog flies are not dying, but you are dying because you're burning out. And then Kinho's Poopa is really nice. Kinho's Poopa has a 30 times 2 attack. So the Bone Rattler doesn't do much of anything. These bog flies are killing themselves on the thorns. That will allow me to do to play cards down here later. Guess we play a train steward at the top because it doesn't fit in the center. We do play a molten encasement here because we want it to die there. And then do four damage, gain more charged echoes, or bone rattler. Guess we do the echo break. We can always do the Bone Rattler anyway. Sure. We do it here because this has Etch. Great. Now, a brief respite, which is quite good because we need it to put things down here. Yeah, let's put a train steward down here. I want to put you up here. Unless you fit in the center, which you do not. All right, you put you go up here. We will apply burnout five to you. And then force contamination is bad this turn. Okay, so nothing else. End turn. Feels like we're going to win this one, no problem. We are. We're already winning it. So our kin host Poopa is doing pretty well, actually. So far. And I had a very strong second floor that I barely used. 
So all of a sudden this is looking a lot better than it was looking before. What did we get? When you summon the second unit during a turn, gain three Ember. That's actually really good with how many units we have that we play. Forgotten Trade, gain Ember per Charged Echo. We, we want that the other direction. Power of Knowledge, deal 15 damage for each spell in the Consume Pile. That could get really good. We currently have one, two... Two, three, four. We currently have four spells that have consume on them. We have the desire to get more. Let's get the power of knowledge. Crushing demise. Ho oh, ho. I like that one. You don't actually have to have a unit there to use it, right? I don't think you do. I'm going to take it. Oh no, no, wait a minute. Memories of the Melted. Memories of the Melted goes really well in this deck, because we have a lot of units that die. Yeah. What are we going to spend the Ember on? <laughs> Bone Rattler? Bone Rattler so far. We'll find a way. We'll find a way to spend this, but another Consume card, one that gives us energy, is welcome. We could remove more cards. I do like that. Merchant of Magic is pretty good. We just picked up a couple of spells. Duplicate isn't terrible. Yeah, we're definitely going to the left. And let's check out the Concealed Caverns first. I don't know this one either. Some new events. A collection of glowing brands are scattered next to a granite crypt. Each brand bears the mark of one of the clans of hell. Those of the Hellhorn, Stygian Guard, and Umbra seem to be the only ones hot enough to be of use. Branding the Crypt may yield additional support from that clan, either through monster or magic. Which clan's brand do you want to use? Ooh, these are rare... rare draft picks. Jeez, I have no idea what the rare... what the rare spells and units are from these different clans. The Stygian Guard is more likely to give me something that is a spell. The Umbra is more likely to give me something that gives me space or ember. But it could give me something that has to do with morsels, which would be useless. The Hellhorned is most likely to give me a unit, I think. So I think I'm going to take Stygian Guard, because the Umbra has the possibility of giving me something I do not want. The Stygian Guard gives me spells, which I do want. The Hellhorned might give me only units, which I am already worried about the space that we're taking up. So let's go Stygian Guard and hope. Hope. Deep Offering. Deep Offering is something I really like. Let's look at the other ones. Siren Song is Pyre Bound. Ascend enemy units on this floor and apply Dazed 3. So just send them straight to the Pyre. Because it's Pyre Bound. It's okay. Deep Offering can be ridiculous. Especially when we have ways to get lots of Ember. Hell's Banners helps with that. Yeah, let's use Deep Offering. It's also a consume card, which is good too. Great. I think that was useful. Now let's go into the Divine Horde. Trader's Quill is probably good with all the consume cards we're getting. Concussive Coals is one of my favorites. Spade's First Blade. Friendly units gain Rage 3 whenever they lose a stack of Burnout don't really have enough burnout units for us to care that much. So I think we're taking either Trader's Quill or Concussive Coals. I like both of them. I think the Trader's Quill is more on theme, and the Concussive Coals is just 
just extremely good all the time. Let's do Trader's Quill because it's on theme. And because I choose Concussive Coals a lot. Now, Merchant of Magic. Eternal Stone could remove Consume from a card. Could remove Consume from Deep Offering. That would make it cost a lot, though. Could remove Consume from Memories of the Melted. Now that is interesting to me. Yeah, that's very interesting to me. Let's remove Consume from Memories of the Melted. I didn't click on Eternal Stone. Don't know why I don't do that. So, Memories of the Melted. Lose Consume. Surge Stone could get rid of an Echo Break. We do kind of want the Echo Breaks at the beginning of the battle and not at the end, so Surge Stone is perfect for that. Yeah. And then Ember Stone is something I would like to put on Deep Offering especially. Deep Offering and po Power of Knowledge are both good options there. I'm going to choose Deep Offering. We even have enough to purge a card. That would mean that we're purging three cards. Let's purge these two and then decide if we still want to purge more. So we can definitely purge a Dreg at this point. Purging an Echo Break would not be bad either. Purging a Train Steward would be fine. Let's remove... Let's remove one Train Steward. And then let's remove a Dreg. And I think I will pay 50 to remove one of the Echo Breaks. One of the ones that we did not upgrade. Okay, moving on. Hidden Assault. Sneaky Clipped have infiltrated your train. Use spells and higher floors to take them out. We actually have a fair amount of spells in this deck. Could use the Seal of, of Aggression. I'm okay with that. Get a random artifact. Our last random artifact was really good. Let's try for another really good random artifact. So you've got Stealth 2. You have Stealth 1. We could just put things at the top. The fact that this one has Stealth 2 is kind of a problem. We do have our Molten Encasement to take care of that. On the other hand, we could just kill one of these directly with Echo Break after playing Lady of the House down here. When you summon the second unit during a turn, gain three. So we can play all of these cards, and we're going to draw a card, and probably be able to play it. Putting Echo right at the bottom doesn't seem like a good idea in this one. Putting anything at the bottom doesn't necessarily seem like a great idea in this one. But still, that would allow the Echo Breaks to do something. Allowing the Echo Breaks to do something is only okay. Let's start with Echo Right. Oh man, but I do want them at the bottom. Okay. You know what? We're going to put other things higher up. So that goes there. We're going to put the Molten Encasement in front. We're going to play a Lady of the House down here, primarily to add the Infused, the Echo, so that Echo Break can actually kill one. And I think I want her in the back. No, let's put her in front of Echo Right. Hey, Deep Offering. Deep Offering is very nice here. 
So let's play Echo Break to defeat one of these. And then do we want to play Deep Offering instead of Train Steward? Yes. Draw five cards. Oh right, the Trader's Quill. The Trader's Quill is wonderful here. So we could actually just play Bone Rattler. Yeah, we could just play Bone Rattler here and defeat this one. And that would remove two of the of the shell from that. Sure, let's do it. Alright, weird first turn, but I liked it. The Wickless Baron Train Steward can go in the center. This can go down here. The Infused Consume helps a lot. Wish I could fit the Bog Chrysalis down here, but I can't. We'll put that somewhere else, though. So let's put the Wickless Baron Train Steward here. Let's do Hallowed Drippings here. Keep this lady, the Lady of the House, alive. And then I also want to do Shelter down here. And then we can play some Dregs. I don't mind playing the Dregs. Let's play the Dregs next to this Train Steward. And the Bog Chrysalis can go up here too. Let's just put it in the back and play Dregs in front. There we go. And you have Harvest, so every time any of these die, including from Burnout, you are getting stronger. I like it. You are dying from what? You are stealthy. How are you dying? Apply Reap 1 to enemy units. Oh, when it strikes, it applies Reap to all of the enemy units, not just the one that it strikes. How interesting. Nice. We don't have space at the bottom, but our units are still stealthy. I can use Echo Break to defeat... to almost defeat one of them. Ho-ho! Power of Knowledge? Yeah, so Power of Knowledge could go down here. Molten Encasement. We want the Molten Encasement in front on this floor. And then we'll play a drag up here. That will give us more energy. And then we play Power of Knowledge to defeat you. We draw a card that we will play at the top, I guess. We play Accelerated Incubation, which removes Shell. So it hatches that egg. And Echo Break could kill one of these. Kill one of these. You still make it to the next floor because nobody attacked. Nobody attacked down there. Echo Break, it's pretty nice. Force Contamination, I don't feel like removing my... like extracting three right now. So let's just use the Echo Breaks to defeat these two units. Let's use Memory of the Melted to just gain a whole bunch of energy. And you, I wanted to die, so that's nice. I guess we'll put some Train Stewards at the top. We have, we have the First of Kin in our deck still. Don't know where that first of kin is going to go. Actually, it can go up here after this guy burns himself out. Okay, so let's save... Let's not play this train steward so we can fit the first of kin up there. The hidden assault ended up not being too hard. Because we do have a lot of spells that deal damage, partially because of Traitor's Quill. So, Power of Knowledge is here to do nothing. 
Echo Break is here to do nothing. So... I guess we just play First of Kin at the top. Okay. Done with that turn. Bring on the boss. So we are not immediately winning. Good to know. Memory of the Melted. Memories of the Melted could gain energy. We are going to draw a card. It's going to be one of those two cards. Both of those seem quite nice to draw. I want to kill these back ones so that they don't deal so much damage. I don't like that you have Sweep. But I do want to kill one of these. Let's start there. You are burning out? Wait a minute, how are you not dying? Oh, you burn out because you don't die before you burn out, right. You are burning out during the final phase. The real question I have is where to do the power of knowledge. I guess we can figure that out because we can play a train steward. And then we can play Memories of the Melted. There's nothing here that triggers off of me playing this yet. Okay, so Extract 3, Apply Melee, Weakness 3. Definitely going to do that. Going to do that to the boss. And I believe that the best we can do is kill this one with the 90 damage. So that it doesn't do an extra 16 damage every single turn. Yeah, let's do that. And the boss doesn't die yet, but it takes a ton of damage. The fact that Our Lady of the House burned out is part of that, but really the sweep, the sweep is real bad here. And we click and turn and win. Great. Our deck is working. And we got the Volatile Gauge. Hmm. Its cost is randomized between 1 and 3. That... That could be bad, right? It makes the dregs much worse. Maybe we don't take that. It helps with the deep offering. Well, on average, it doesn't do anything to deep offering. Because deep offering it initially costs two. And I have been told that the Ember Stone activates after the Volatile Gauge. It really hurts Accelerated Incubation. Hurts the Bog Chrysalis. Hurts the Dregs kind of a lot. Hurts the Echo Breaks. Hurts the Entombed Explosive. Helps the First of Kin. Hurts all of these cards. Yeah, I don't think we take this. I think we just get 25 gold. So, deal 5 damage to enemy units per charged Echo. That's not likely to do a whole lot. Infused Extract 1. Deal 5 damage twice. Slay, you gain 2 charged Echoes. I like that one. Oh, and I like the Total Recall. I do like the Total Recall. I think we're going to take Revenge of the Damned, though. It has ex Extract 1, but it also has Infused. And it could be quite nice. Infused Endless. Memento Mori is back as well. And we could have another Memories of the Melted. Memento Mori is not a bad choice in this one because of how many friendly unit deaths we're going to have. I think I want that.
Now, we do want a Merchant of Magic a lot more than a Merchant of Steel right now. We need more pack shards. Where are we going to get those from? There is a Divine Temple there. There's a Divine Temple there. So we can get them from the two Divine Temples. Kind of makes me want to not take not take the divine boons here unless we need it. So, Merchant of Magic, let's do the Concealed Caverns first. Ho ho, we saw this one last time. Some familiar crystals. Covenant Memorial, so we can take the larger one, make a unit really big in all ways, or we could take the small one to make a unit only take up one space. I took the large one last time. Making the first of kin take only one space seems really nice though. Yeah, I think I'm going to make the first of kin smaller with the minor refraction. First of kin, you now only take up one space. Great. And... Merchant of Magic. Stack Stone. Could give more armor, could give more melee weakness, or could give more burnout. None of those are very... very enticing. Ember Stone is always enticing. <laughs> Again, Deep Offering with the Ember Stone is amazing. Memento Mori is quite good with the Ember Stone. Power of Knowledge is not bad with the Ember Stone. I do like putting the Deep Offering on the Ember Stone, especially because what else are you going to put on Deep Offering? So let's keep doing that. And then Power Stone. We could put it on Revenge of the Damned. Yeah, there we go. It's an excellent one for a Power Stone. Let's reroll. Eternal Stone, we could remove Consumed from another card. I don't think I care about removing Consumed from any of these cards. And I actually do want the Consume for some cards, because we we have a few things that work off of that. Surge Stone. We could put it on that Echo Break. I will put it on that Echo Break. And then another Ember Stone. Memento Mori is still an option. Both of those Echo Breaks are an option. Memory, Memories of the Melted. What else would we put on this? I mean, I don't think we need an Ember Stone on that, though. Because when we play it, we'll probably get more Ember than we can spend that turn. So I think I'm going to instead put it on Power of Knowledge. And... Do we purge a card? No. I think purges are not as good as really good artifacts, which we might get in the future. So, Fell the Wings of Light. How does our deck do against Fell? Fell and her allies will add Scourge cards to your hand and deck. Ick. But let's just kill all the enemies. Right? No, Bell puts it in my deck. So, Revenge of the Damned is quite nice here. Deep Offering is always quite nice. Lady of the House, I think we might use to just kill one of these Alabaster Guardians. She could go on the second floor, for example. Echo Right, I still want on the first floor. First floor goes Echo Right. 
And then Lady of the House we're putting here. This is also getting giving us... Oh, actually, Echo Right gave us the energy from Hell's Banners because it put out two units. How about that? I probably want to play Ultimate Penance, Penance then. We are putting you there. We're going to slay one of you. Like that one. That one that's real annoying. Because it adds Scourges to our hand. Let's slay you. And we got Force Contamination. We don't care about that one. So the question is, do we just play Deep Offering or do we play the Ultimate Penance first? Get rid of it. Deep Offering is going to draw five. I think we just play Deep Offering. And wherever we play this is going to deal 30 damage to the front unit. Seems good at the bottom. Memories of the Melting does nothing currently. Both of these Echo Breaks are pretty decent. And Accelerated Incubation can really accelerate the incubation of that one. So, Accelerated Incubation. You're going to hatch. Echo Break might as well... Might as well do this. Let's put a train steward at the top. It's just one of the normal train stewards. You know, semi-normal. Memories of the Melted gains one. Aha! Pay one, gain one. And then... Let's do damage here so that you kill this one next turn. Okay. We've killed a lot of units on the first turn. That's pretty good. Now, Resolve triggers after combat, so that doesn't trigger because you all die. Ooh, the first of kin can go at the bottom. I like it. I like that that can fit at the bottom. Let's put it at the bottom. In front or behind? Yeah, right there. Now you're only taking one damage. Now, if we play the drag, we get more energy. So let's let's add it here. Let's put the burnout units in the same place. Now we have more energy. We can play the bog chrysalis. Yeah, the bog chrysalis just fine because it will hatch relatively quickly. Ooh, and the train steward with the wickless baron on top could go here. I like it because these units are going to die. Guaranteed. And then Bone Rattler. Bone Rattler means we do 30 more damage to the boss because consuming it kills this front one. Great. Very good second turn. All of the Alabaster Guardians are gone. And no matter where Fell the Wings of Light goes, she's going to be taking damage. So, Infuse Consume, apply 5 Burnout to friendly units with Burnout, like those. I will also hatch the Egg. We could play the Ultimate Penance. We could play the Entombed Explosive at the top or the bottom. I actually really like playing it at bottom. And then let's play dregs in front. Ho oh, ho, we got a shelter. I like the shelter as well. Shelter can go at the bottom. Applying armor to our units. And then we can play the ultimate penance so we don't take the damage. Great. And we get it out of the deck. Getting those out of the deck is good, too. Nice. What are we doing now? Power of Knowledge deals 105 damage right now. 
That's pretty nice. We can even fit a molten encasement in front of our units at the bottom. Let's do it. Apply stealth to our units at the bottom. Echo break. You are dying because of Kinho's Poopa and the echoes and the fact that you would have Reap. Okay. I believe that means he doesn't add his Weight of Contrition card. So I will not kill him with the Echo Break. The Power of Knowledge could really knock you down. Let's let's do that. Now you're dying. Now you're dying. And then Memories of the Melted. We don't have any units that have Encant, do we? No. We had the opportunity to take one, but I did not take it. And then I guess another train steward at the top. Another train steward at the top, deal some damage to the boss right now. Oh, we also have more energy, but we don't have space. We're really lacking space. Beating every unit every turn. And by the way, he did die before adding the Weight of Contrition. Ooh, two ultimate penances in our hand. Ick. We can't play both of them. Which means our Pyre is going to take five damage guaranteed. We could play Force Contamination. Seems pretty good at the bottom here. And we can play Revenge of the Damned, which seems pretty decent at the bottom here, too. So do this. Slay, gain two Echoes. Extract three Echoes, apply Melee Weakness. Should we apply it to the boss? Yes, definitely. And, oh, Power of Knowledge. Not cheap enough to play. So, melee weakness is on the boss, but the boss hasn't taken the damage from the melee weakness yet. Ultimate penance again. Ick. We can play Memories of the Melted this turn. That's pretty nice. We really want you to die. Well, we can make you die by doing Echo Break down here. Force Contamination, I guess we're not going to play. We're going to get rid of the Penance and play Memories of the Melted. Draw a card, gain energy. Ooh, that's a good card. It deals 30 damage and it gets us more charged Echoes. If it kills, though. Only if it kills. The Memento Mori could mean we we defeat this unit. If we defeat this unit, do we deal less damage to the boss, though? Because the melee weakness is going to apply to you and you. Huh. Let me decide whether we actually want to play Memento Mori on this unit. Because as it is, the boss is taking 135 damage. That's really coming from what? It's coming from the train steward hitting twice at 27 damage. Would we rather have 35 plus 14 or 27 times two? We'd, we'd rather have 14 plus 35. Actually, no, no. This is, this is a little bit more. Okay, we don't want to play Memento Mori there. In which case, we... <laughs> what do we do? We could play it down here. Alright, the melee weakness changed my mind about what we wanted to do in terms of killing units. Kind of surprising. Power of Knowledge? 
deals 105 damage. We could do the Power of Knowledge and then Force Contamination. Very nice. Let's do that. Power of Knowledge, then Forced Contamination. Applying Melee Weakness. Now you're getting 120 damage. And then we could play a Molten Encasement or we could play the Ultimate Penance. Let's get rid of the Ultimate Penance. Don't really like those those scourges in the deck. And the final wave, we are not currently winning, but that can change very quickly. <laughs> very quickly, as it were. Like this, like that. Yeah, we're already winning, let's do it. I, I'm really believing in the deck now. The deck is a little weird but I believe in it. We took five damage from one of the Scourges. Formless Child, Infused. Extinguish, return a random defeated unit to your hand and apply plus 40 attack value. Interesting. And then there's also the Wormkin etchings, which allow us to consume our cards again. Don't think we need an, a second accelerated incubation. What consume cards do we have? The Bone Rattler, accelerated incubation, two Echo Breaks that do some damage, Hallowed Drippings, Shelter. So the Worm Etchings works really well with, with which one of these? The Trader's Quill. But I think I really want to use the Formless Child this time. Let's do the Formless Child. Grow big and strong, Formless Child. And do we want another Light of Seraph? I want both Fell's Remorse and Light of Seraph. I guess this, the Hell's Banners, prevents me from needing the Fell's Remorse as much. The Winged Steel makes it so that I need Herzl's Compound a little bit less. Let's take Light of Seraph. Two Lights of Seraph. Now then, we need to use both of these Divine Temples. And I do want a Merchant of Trinkets. There are two Merchant of Trinkets coming. So do I really need this one? On the other hand, what is the right side doing for me? Not much. So let's go to the left side. I think I want to see an artifact first. Enemy units get minus one, or seven ember on the first turn of battle. You know, neither of these are that special. I'm going to take the winged indulgence though. Enemy units get minus one. It's pretty small, but I think that it helps a fair amount against the bosses, like the last divinity is getting minus one on any, on every floor, right? That might be significant. Now let's do upgrade the champion. A bog deep cocoon. The problem with these is that I have no idea what the egg hatches into. <laughs> Ooh, resolve, return a random consume spell to your hand, the repeater. Let's do the repeater return a random consume spell to our hand every single turn. That seems like it could get ridiculous. Merchant of Trinkets, let's look at the Divine Temple first. We know we're going to do stuff here. So for example, we're going to sacrifice a unit. Don't really want to sacrifice the Bog Chrysalis. We could sacrifice the Dreg onto another dreg. Extinguish plus 20? What? That's so weird. When it dies, it gets more attack. I guess that only works if you have reform. The 
the molten encasement could be sacrificed. We're definitely not sacrificing one of those train stewards. Let's sacrifice the molten encasement. Sacrifice it and put it on top of the entombed explosive. So this entombed explosive does both things. And look, the art has been combined together into one art. That looks exactly the same. Upgrade a spell to gain spell chain. What would we like for that one? Memento Mori would be really expensive if we did that. Revenge of the Damned could be good. Power of Knowledge could be good. Bone Rattler? Bone Rattler would just mean we consume twice. That kind of gives 50, 60 damage for zero cost. Or 30 damage, I mean, for zero cost. Maybe we don't do this? If we don't do this, then we have to sacrifice a unit here and get one of the spell upgrades. I'm fine with that. Let's go over here, see if anything... Whoa, Forever Flame? Units cost minus two Ember. Units cost minus two Ember. I mean... It's good, but we don't... We don't really replay our units very much. When an egg unit is summoned, remove shell 3 and apply armor 30. Or the memorial fund. The memorial fund is not something you want to pay 220 for. That doesn't seem great. Let's do hardened hull and then save our money for a future shop. But Forever Flame seems really nice. It's just that I don't want it currently. Okay, the Conduit Masters. Non-boss enemy units get plus eight attack. Plus eight attack. Huh. I kind of want to turn that on. Let's turn it on. It might be a bad idea. But we've done so well in the normal battle so far. It's a bad idea because of the winged conduit, probably. So we could play Echo Right and Accelerated Incubation at the bottom. And we could kill this one so they don't have multi-strike. I don't mind that. Let's start there. So, Echo Right goes here. We play Echo Break to kill this one. We play a Lady of the House, probably not here, probably on floor two. Then we get to draw a card. Revenge of the Damned. Doesn't really slay anything. Still worth doing, of course. Hallowed Drippings, we could play there. Or we could... I guess let's play it there. We get consumed cards back, remember? So let's play Accelerated Incubation. And... You're getting two because of... because of the Reap. You have minus 30. Ooh, that hurts. Who are we hitting with this? I guess... I guess I most want to hit the back one, but... Let's hit the front one because we need to hit it to get to the back one, probably. All right, not the not the best first turn, but it was okay. And we got Accelerated Incubation back. You know, it does work with Trader's Quill. Ho ho, first of kin. First of kin can go at the bottom. I think what I want to do is play a Dreg in front first. 
So the drag goes in front. And then we play Accelerated Incubation, which kills this one and kills our drag. There we go. So we avoided some things there. We are definitely going to play Deep Offering and Memories of the Melted. I guess we'll, we'll play Memories of the Melted first because we can't kill any more of our own units easily. So Memories of the Melted, we just play. Nobody has, yeah, nobody has Encamped. Bog Chrysalis, do we want that? We could put it in front down here. Could put it in front down here. We want the first of kin down here. First of kin at the bottom. We want the bog chrysalis could be at the bottom. Maybe. Or we could put it on a different floor. Let's put it on this floor so you don't get hurt so bad. Let the bog chrysalis die. Or, or not die, as it were, because it had 30 armor. How about that? The drag is going to go up here. And then we are consuming the deep offering, which means it's going to do damage when we play it. 30 damage. I think we want that 30 damage to go here. Great. Now then, Echo Break. Echo Break can kill this one taking off the multi-strike. We can play a train steward somewhere. This is not the best of the train stewards, so let's put it at the top. Do we want it in front? Doesn't really matter. And echo break. We're going to do this somewhere. I guess we'll put it here. And then let's play Bone Rattler. Let's play that here so the 30 damage goes on this one. Great. That turn was much better than the first turn. And honestly, I don't really mind if my if my units die. Not very much at all. I wouldn't want Kinho's Poopa to die. But I don't mind if a lot of other ones die. This one grants stealth and explodes. We like that. The Memento Mori cost a lot. We want to do the drag up here at the top, probably. And the the Entombed Explosive at the bottom. Entombed Explosive goes at the bottom prevents our units from getting hurt. Then, don't know where we want to do shelter, but we do want to do a drag, and it could go in a few different places. I want to kill this one. And the way to do that is to do more damage at the top, I guess. See what, oh, we haven't drawn a card yet. I want to see what card we draw. I guess we play Shelter next. And the Shelter could kill one of these. Or the Shelter could deal a lot of damage to this one. I want these to have the armor though, so let's do it down here. So now we have to choose what we're playing. We're either playing the Formless Child or Memento Mori. The Formless Child has to die for it to be worthwhile. And Memento Mori... Memento Mori could go here. The Formless Child actually doesn't have to die for it to be worthwhile, because it has Infused on it, so we could do Force Contamination. Yeah, so let's put it here. And then do Force Contamination on you, so that you are dying. Well, apparently you're not dying yet. You are now dying. The Pyre is getting stronger, but nobody's getting there. It's the way I like it.
Ooh, we got Deep Offering back. That's exciting. The Bog Chrysalis has 40 attack. How interesting. So we actually want to play that because then it will produce 40 attack Bog Flies. I like it. Let's start there. So we're going to do that here. Down here, we want to do the Molten Encasement in the front. Yep, Molten Encasement in the front. The Wickless Baron Train Steward, we really want to put it here. And we can. Let's put it sort of in the back. Echo Break can kill this one. I like that. Kill that one. Stop the multi-strike. Not that it matters too much. The Power of Knowledge. Power of Knowledge can kill you. Memories of the Melted or Train Steward. We could put the Train Steward at the top. Let's put the Train Steward at the top. Then do Memories of the Melted. And then do a Deep Offering. Draw five more cards. We could play another Power of Knowledge. Power of Knowledge. And then... Memento Mori and Revenge of the Damned. Yeah. Alright. This is going really well. We seem to have pretty competent floors on every floor, which is really nice. It's really nice to have all of your floors be pretty decent. So what can we do that actually helps us this turn? Memories of the Melted? I don't know. That might help. The Shelter does something. Echo Break can only target our own units. Power of Knowledge can only target our own units. Memento, Mor Memento Mori can be played. And then we can play Shelter, and that draws us a card with the Winged Steel. Which, the card is dead weight. At least we're not drawing that next turn, right? Alright. How are we doing against the boss? We are currently dying against the boss. The Force Contamination might change that. Plus the Revenge of the Damned. We cannot play Memento Mori, though. That's okay. Memento Mori only does 90 damage. Only 90 damage. Small potatoes. So let's do Forced Contamination. And then that already wins. So we click the End Turn button and win. We got 400 gold for selecting the trial there, which means I should be able to buy one or two artifacts because I did that. Alright, collect that gold. That gold is a lot of gold. We could do Total Recall. Total Recall is better now that we get a Consume card back from our discard pile every turn. Revenge of the Damned is okay. I think we're going to take Total Recall now. On the other hand, Ancient Resonance isn't too shabby. And it is infused. I think I will take the Ancient Resonance. There's a very small thing that's causing me to do it. It's because it doesn't have a Divinity Mastered stamp. Wicked Blaze. Reform a unit and apply an additional... Plus 10 attack. I would love to reform units. Do we run out of space, though? Probably not. Yeah, let's take it. Alright. We have a bunch of cards in our deck. A bunch of cards in our deck. We could duplicate a card. We could go to the Merchant of Steel. Don't think I really want those, though. So let's go to the right. And one of the things that we need to do is go to the Divine Temple. And we have to sacrifice. 
we could sacrifice a dreg to put it on another dreg, for example. I don't mind that. Could sacrifice a dreg and put it on something better than a dreg as well. The Molten Encasement is not bad. We could sacrifice that and put that on something. We've kind of already done that once. I think that I want to sacrifice a dreg. Probably. If I need to sacrifice something, it's going to be a dreg. So. Sacrifice a dreg. And we're going to put it on a dreg because it adds burnout. I mean, I guess we could put it on Lady of the House. But I'd rather put it on a dreg. This one, for that matter. Okay, dreg sacrificed to dreg. Then we're going to come back here after going through the Merchant of Magic. And the Merchant of Trinkets. What is in here? Dun Echo is useless when you're on the eighth ring. Rationing scales seems pretty scary. It actually doesn't help us, it only hurts us. Units get an extra upgrade slot is useless when we can't upgrade our units anymore. Okay, those are all all useless. Let's reroll. When one or more echo are added to a floor, charged echoes are added to a floor, apply reap one to a random enemy unit twice. Okay. The start of battle, add two charged echoes to each floor. I like the base charge. So I'm definitely going to buy some of those. How many of them depends on what we're doing at the Merchant of Magic. Freeze Stone makes a spell stick in your hand until you want to play it. Which could be... What spell? What spell do we not want to play immediately? I don't know. Shelter? Power of Knowledge could be? No, I don't think I care about the Free Stone. Surge Stone... We don't actually want. Ember Stone, we want that. We want that on Ancient Resonance and Memento Mori. Let's put one on Memento Mori. And then we refresh here too. Okay, we probably don't care about Eternal Stone. Let's look at what it would affect. Yep, don't care about Eternal Stone. So we only have 40 to spend at, at the Merchant of Magic if we want to. The Merchant of Trinkets, if we had 40 less, we could buy... Could we buy all of them? Well, let's see here. We're definitely going to buy this one and this one. We can buy this one and still have the 40 to spend. Okay. How about that? We're buying everything that we want in both of the shops. Except that... What do I want here? I think I want this here. But I actually want to look at what we're what we're doing here. We need to buy one of these. Giving a spell spell chain. I would love that on deep offering. <laughs> that would be amazing on deep offering. Remember that the second one costs more. So what would we want to add spell chain to? Honestly, anything that costs zero would be fine. Could add it to the Bone Rattler again. Otherwise, we're doing a Purge Stone to just get rid of a spell. Which I don't particularly care about. Don't really want to get rid of my spells. So, Twin Stone it is. We just have to decide which is the best thing to put it on. Honestly, I'm thinking of Bone Rattler. It's a weird one. 
It's just that the the plus one cost doesn't hurt Bone Rattler. It doesn't make it so that we have a spell in our deck that we can't play. Memories of the Melted is definitely worth it, but only if we can spend the Ember that we get from it, and I don't know that we can in a typical situation. Force Contamination is bad because you'd have to extract six. Hallowed Drippings is fine. Basically makes the Burnout unit stay. I'm going to choose the Bone Rattler. Weird choice, but it gets us above 105. So now that we've done that, we know that anything that we add this to is fine, such as the Revenge of the Damned. And Emberstone, we can add to anything. Memento Mori is definitely an option. Ancient Resonance is an option. Wicked Blaze, Blaze is an option. Those are the three that are most significant to us. Let's do Ancient Resonance. Okay, we've spent, spent our money. We only have $5. We have our pack shards. We can remove up to two cards. I don't know if I want to remove any cards. They all kind of have a reason for existing. Except for maybe one of the train stewards. This one. So, do I want to remove a different one? If I removed another one, it would be... One of the starting cards, like a dreg. could remove the sad dreg. That means we have less charged echoes that we can use, but otherwise I'm pretty okay with that choice. Let's go through the final gauntlet. Seraph the Patient is our first one. So melee weakness to the front unit. So our units die pretty fast. And Seraph the Patient gets stronger when we rally or encant, which we do kind of a lot. We do both of those things a lot on every floor, so it's going to be pretty significant. I do like the first of Kin down here. I always like Echo right at the bottom. Formless Child could go in front and die, which doesn't do anything if we don't have a defeated unit. Huh. That's a little bit problematic. I like the first of kin down here, so let's start with Echo Right. And then the first of kin can go basically in the middle. I do like the Bog Chrysalis down here because having both of the shell units on the same floor means that when we draw our, our spell that removes shell, it affects both of them. Hallowed Drippings, there's no downside to consuming that because we'll just get it back. So let's consume it. Consumed. <laughs> Memories of the Melted. Does nothing this turn, but I'm glad I drew it this turn instead of next turn. Formless Child. Do we play that this turn? We could just play it on a different floor. Either way, I want to play this one. Probably want to play it in the middle back. And then the Formless Child we are playing somewhere. Let's play it in the middle. I'm sure we will want it there eventually. Dealt a little bit to the boss on the first turn. That's always nice. All right, so you are dying. That's okay. We do want you to die, but we want you to die after other units die, which hasn't happened yet. Oh, here's the accelerated incubation. So we can do that and just make these right now. 
could play the Lady of the House. Let's see here. We need a unit to die before we have you die. I guess that can be the Lady of the House or something else. Lady of the House will eventually die. I mean, she's dying right now, so that's something. We play this one down here. And then what? We don't really care about most of these. The Force Contamination can add melee weakness to the boss. I kind of like that. And then Burnout 5. Burnout 5 is actually good because when we get her back, because she's going to die and then the Formless Child will die next turn. Probably. Well, maybe not next turn, but a future turn. When we get her bot, her back, she will have more burnout. So let's do that here. And then we can do the force contamination on the boss. So the boss takes a lot of damage. Oh, you're not dying anymore. Whoops. And then we can kill you with this, or we could deal more damage to the boss with this. Sure. I do want there to be charged echoes down here, so we're going to do this down here. We could get the bog chrysalis back. Sure, wicked blaze to get the bog chrysalis back. How about that? Let's put that one in front. Well, it would die. Let's put it here. And then the Bone Rattler. Do we care how much attack the boss has? Not really. Let's just deal 30 more damage to the boss. Oh, right. Oh, right. I forgot that we get to do that again. <laughs> sure. Except that it doesn't have consume anymore, so there's no value in playing it where the boss is. So we... we don't get anything from this. Oh. <laughs> there was no value at all in adding spell chain to that. Whoops. I forgot that the copy wouldn't have consume, because purge overrides consume. So it doesn't actually work with the traitor's quill as I was hoping it would. Revenge of the Damned could just kill you outright. I like that. This deals a bunch of damage to, to the units, too. In fact, we could kill most of you. Alright, let's start here. You go boom. And then Ancient Resonance does a whole bunch of damage. Hallowed Drippings, we probably want to play... I don't know. There's no real reason to play it any particular place. Sure. If you survive, you will survive longer. The train steward we want to play at the top, but we don't have we don't have enough energy to play two summons anymore. So what we do is we play shelter down here. We play Deep Offering. Do we play it down here? I don't know if it's valuable to play it down here. We don't. Or we could save it. We don't have any Ember this turn. Yeah, let's save it. End that turn. Hallow Drippings. We have so many Hallow Drippings. <laughs> So the Wickless Baron version of the Train Steward is quite nice because it gets stronger when units die next to it. Huh. So many good things to play. You are unfortunately dying. Can we prevent that from happening? Maybe. The downside is that when we played this, 
we filled up all of the slots, so I can't play something in front. So our Kinho's Poopa is going to die. Kind of want to play the Wickless Train, the Wickless Baron Train Steward up here with a a drag in front of it. And then we are going to deal a whole bunch of damage down here. How do we want to do the, that damage? Let's do Halo Drippings just to do 30 damage. Let's do Echo Breaks. We can do 60. Both of these consume, so they actually increase how much this one does. So this one is going to do 90 damage. 90 damage. That's kind of not enough, actually. I, I want to kill this one. In any event, we will kill this one. We will do as much damage as we can to one of these. The front one, I guess. There we go. Our Kinho's Poopa still dies, but both of those guys die. Our Formless Child has not died yet, because I played him on the first turn, and I didn't want him to die before somebody else died, so he just has never died. <laughs> this Molten Encasement is really nice. We want, it, we want it at the bottom. Molten Encasement Entombed Explosive. You go at the bottom. In front, of course. And what else do we put at the bottom? I don't know. We can play... We should play another train steward somewhere. I'm okay with you dying. Let's put the train steward... In the back at the top. In the back at the top. Let's put... Let's do this and this at the bottom. So we start with the Echo Break, and then we do Ancient Resonance. Deals damage to both of them. And then we do Memories of the Melted, which doesn't affect anything, but gives us lots of Ember. Where do we want the Molten Encasement? Could put it at the top. Don't really need it right now. I think we just do Memento Mori, hit the boss for 70. There. Where does the boss go? It goes to the top. Boss at the top means it's going to take a fair amount of damage at the top. It would be nice to play Force Contamination up here. Yes. Let's do that. Force Contamination on the boss. Have melee weakness. I want to play Revenge of the Damned. At the bottom. That slayed that one, so we get more more echoes. We can play Power of Knowledge. Do we want to hit the boss with that? Yes. 70 damage against the boss. You're taking 202 now? Oh, because of Reap. Right. The Wicked Blaze, unfortunately, we cannot play. So do we play do we play deep offering? I'm not sure. I think I'd rather play shelter and still save the deep offering for a turn when I feel like we need it. It goes a lot better if we draw it in the same turn as we draw our memories of the melting. Oh, and we got the molten encasement back. Wonderful. The molten, the molten encasement entombed explosive goes in the front here again. 
And, oh, there's one more wave remaining. This is not the last wave. Memories of the Melted. There we go. So, what are we doing down at the bottom? We want to deal lots of damage. So, I guess we kill you. And we kill you. The Power of Knowledge deals 90 damage. That's enough to kill you. And then... Oh no, no! I didn't play Memories of the Melted before I ran out of Ember. That was a huge mistake. Whoops. I had a wonderful turn and I screwed it up. Okay, Relentless Phase. The boss is not dying. The boss not dying is bad. We need to play Force Contamination on the boss. We need to play Ancient Resonance. Yeah, we need to play all of these except for Wicked Blaze. Wicked Blaze would be better next turn. Much better next turn. So, Force Contamination on the boss. We want Revenge of the Damned. Do we care about the two the two charged echoes? I care about it a little bit. Yeah. Probably should have played Ancient Resonance first. But here we are. Ho oh, ho, we can play Forced Contamination again. Great. Play Shelter first, though. Then we play Force Contamination again on the boss. Oh no, it takes a lot less damage because apparently giving it that extra attack had it kill something. Whoops. Okay, well, the fact that the boss is going pretty far and has a whole lot of damage is bad. Is real bad, actually. We do have the Memories of the Melted. We get to do that here. Now, Memento Mori can go here. Yeah, we can do a fair amount of damage to the boss right now. Do damage to the boss. Do damage to the boss. Do damage to the boss. The Molten Encasement actually is really nice up here. And then Deep Offering, we're doing damage to the boss with the Consume. Memento Mori before Wicked Blaze. So let's play Wicked Blaze now. We can get back the First of Kin or the Molten Encasement or Echo Right. We could get back Echo Right. Huh. Let's get back Echo Right, because it summons uh, another thing when we put it out. <laughs> Has Burnout 1, though, so we have to play it here. And then we do Echo Break against the boss. And Forced Contamination so the boss takes more damage. Okay, so... We're doing a fair amount of damage to the boss this turn. But it really depends on what happens next turn. We have Memories of the Melted. Uh, that doesn't do much for us, does it? No. Power of Knowledge is pretty good, though. And Force Contamination is good. So we will do Power of Knowledge first. And then we win. How about that? So we didn't do very well there. But we still won, with no damage on the pyre. Okay. Making it to the last divinity, yet again. Let's go. Yes, and the, the chicken bone, the winged indulgence.
affected the last divinity on every floor. That, that affects the second floor the most. Reap 2. Why do you start with Reap 2? Oh, because we, we added charged echoes. How about that? So then, is it valuable to play Echo right at the bottom? I think so. Echo right goes at the bottom. Could go in the center. But I like Echo right going at the bottom. The hallowed drippings will mean that the damage shield comes off. That doesn't do much. Yeah, it doesn't do much, but it does something. And then we play another card. I want the first of kin here, but I don't know if I want it in the front or the back. Probably, probably in the middle. And we get Deep Offering. Wonderful. We're consuming this, which is unfortunate, but... Oh, and is it valuable to consume it here? It does mean that you take take two shell off of that egg, so we consume less of our charged echoes. Yeah. Let's do it down here. Now... Memento Mori doesn't do anything yet. Force Contamination, we don't care about yet. This is good, because it kills the Wilt Wings. Let's do that. And then... We can play this Dreg down here to take the damage. That's one option. Or we could play the Dreg here or here and just have it do damage to the boss for a little bit. Let's put the drag at the bottom, but we're going to put it in front. We want it to die. And then shelter to add armor to our units. Oh, and it kills that front one. How about that? Great, that was actually a pretty decent first turn. We only put things at the bottom. And of course we get deep offering back. That is excellent. I like that it got back deep offering rather than those other options. I might not play the deep offering this turn, but I'm still happy that it got it back. You, probably we want to kill with Revenge of the Damned. You, we want to put out in front. Either that or the Bog Chrysalis. Huh. Two options that are pretty decent. The Bog Chrysalis can go on any floor, but if we put it on this floor, it it opens very quickly. Let's put it in front. Like, not way in front. Yeah, like right here. Because I want this unit to basically die. You are going to hatch and produce two units that will die rather quickly. We are going to do this to you. And then, do we care about any of these? Oh, ho Ancient Resonance does a lot, but the Spell Shield one prevents it from hitting that one. We do want to play you. And I think we want to play you at the top. Our Burnout units go at the top. 45 damage. I guess we can play Ancient Resonance and Power of Knowledge. Ancient of Resonance, and then Power of Knowledge kills you? Or actually, I don't care, because really there's almost no damage being taken here, except for the drag in the front. Yeah. So, Power of Knowledge we're just going to do here. And then Deep Offering to deal 30 damage to the boss. Give me more some more things to play. We can remove the shell right now. Don't see a reason to do that. 
formless child. I don't really want to play that yet, do I? No, nobody's died. So I think what we do is we play... We play Echo Break against the boss here. And we play Accelerated Incubation because we don't really need it, so let's consume it and deal damage. And then Bone Rattler. Consume it, deal damage. And then just get rid of that one. <laughs> the one that comes from the spell chain. So, how are we doing in this battle so far? I think okay. I'm definitely powering up my spells. Now the Wickless Baron, that's what we wanted. Who died? The Bog Chrysalis died. I don't want to play this yet, but I will definitely want to play it in the future. I think the Wickless Baron Train Steward goes in the center. You, you three die. We might change that later, but for now, you three are dying, and I'm okay with that. Now, let's think about changing that. You have a spell shield. Ick. We can get rid of your spell shield and then kill you. Kind of like that. Get rid of your spell shield. And then kill you. You're getting plus... 50. Because of Harvest. Yeah. I could do Molten Encasement on the second floor to give these Stealth 2, and it also is a Harvest for this one. Oh, I just realized this one doesn't consume so we could do it any time, and it would be fine. Okay, well, let's let's use it then. Do we want to use it at the bottom? Because then we'll have more charged echoes at the bottom? Maybe. Except that... Let's see here, you've got harvest. Yeah, let's, let's use it at the bottom because the charged echoes at the bottom are really nice. Or we could use it here, because we're going to extract three. Yeah, extract three, and then use the Wicked Blitz. And then we can actually play this. Not at the bottom. We could play it at the top. But the sweep is really bad there. Let's put it here. The shell five is a problem. Also, the burnout is a problem. <laughs> okay. All that we're accomplishing here... Oh, oh, the shell. Right. I forgot about this. So it is actually going to hatch. It doesn't hatch until after this one explodes, though. Which means it doesn't get the stealth, I think. But it does mean that you get to harvest a couple of times. So let's see how that goes. We are going to deal a fair amount of damage to the boss here, I like that. Oh, they had burn health. It hatched, but they had burnout one. <laughs> Alright, so bringing back an egg unit with that reform is actually not very good. <laughs> Whoops. We have a couple things that have died. The formless child could get them back. Revenge of the Damned. The Memento Mori is not bad. I think we want to deal with this floor the most. And we just don't have much Ember to deal with. 90 damage. 90 damage to the front one. And then Revenge of the Damned. Kills you. And adds Charged Echoes up here. Now you're taking a fair amount of damage. I'm sad that we couldn't do much more at the bottom. You are burning out. We have six waves remaining. I've been dealing some damage to the boss, but not 
Not nearly enough. We do have Memories of the Melted. Let's play that first somewhere. Somewhere where things are not bad to play. Okay. Molded Encasement Entombed Explosive can go on the second floor. I like that. Could also go on the first floor. I like that too. We're going to play the Weight of Contrition. We're going to play this one for some reason. Hmm. I kind of want you to go here, because I want this train steward to be big and strong. You are a problem. Don't know what to do with you as a problem. But the stealth 2 at the bottom is so helpful. Yeah, let's put it at the bottom. Stealth 2 at the bottom is really helpful. Memento Mori comes in handy. Deal 100 damage to this guy who's about to make it to the pyre. Bam. You are now a problem. You could have horse contamination. I need you to die. So, hallowed drippings, because that just deals 30 damage, but it adds one of these, which is important. And then it adds something to the consume pile. And then extract three, apply melee weakness three, so that you die. Okay, we've solved the top two floors this turn. We've still got a Scourge, of course. We get a Scourge when that one dies. You all have Spell Shield. You're granting Multi-Strike. And you've got Spell Shield. Luckily, my guys are Stealth. But otherwise, that's real bad. The Vengeful Shard is really bad to have in the deck. This one hits all of you, which means it takes off the Spell Shield for all of you. That seems important. If I play Wicked Blaze, I can't also play Formless Child. I'm, I'm really lacking in the Ember. The Hell's Banners could give me that, but only if I have units to play. Which I don't. Kind of a problem. This floor is becoming more of a problem. Don't like that. I think I need to play one of these. So the Wicked Blade we need to play. And I think we play it here. What do we get? Remember that it gets Burnout. This one. We could play that at the bottom, but I think it might be more important for us to play it here. And then what? The fact that you all have Spell Shield means that... What am I going to do? I mean, I guess I could take off all of your Spell Shield, but... You gain 10 armor when I do that. could defeat you, you, these enemies, by doing, by doing the Echo Break and the Ancient Resonance. Actually, the Ancient Resonance does so much less there. So let's do Echo Break on you. And then we play Ancient Resonance, which defeats the back one and takes the Spell Shield off all the others. And then the Vengeful Shard, unfortunately, stays with us. That one unit gets to the top. That's not good. 
And we're not really dealing much damage to the boss anymore. We we were briefly. You've got spell shield two, which is not good for us. We can do force contamination on you, that might be that might be good. You are getting a lot of damage but not dying. You we could kill. We could kill you. We could kill you with... Huh. We could kill you with just this one. Haha. Got him. So what else are we doing elsewhere? I think the Revenge of the Damned goes here. The Force Contamination goes here. And then do we play the Vengeful Shard? I don't think so. Kind of want the shelter. This one doesn't do anything for us. So the shelter is pretty decent. Let's let's get rid of the vengeful shard. Vengeful shard be gone. We got Deep Offering back, that's excellent. Let's also draw Memories of the Melted. Yes, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. Memories of the Melted we just play up here, next to nobody. Memento Mori can defeat, or not defeat, I guess we can't really defeat a unit. We can play Formless Child and Wicked Blaze. Yeah, Formless Child, you go here. You are now dying. That's good. You are still dying, which is unfortunate. Where do we play Wicked Blade? Not down here. They've got Encant. So Wicked Blade goes here. And what are we getting back? Could be this one. Remember that whatever we get back gets Burnout on it. Let's get the Lady of the House. Lady of the House, let's put you at the top. I think we really need to be doing damage to the boss. Think. On the other hand, if we put you here, this train steward doesn't die? Yeah, okay, never mind. We're putting you here. And then the rest of the things are going at the bottom. So, Memento Mori does 120 damage. We can... You have one spell shield. We can break that. And defeat you. And then deep offering... We can now get rid of the vengeful shard. Haha, this can deal damage to a targeted one. I like that. Also, we got Wicked Blaze again. Yes. So, target you. Now, our front unit doesn't die here. We also get to play Wicked Blaze. Up. All, our charged echoes are filled up all the way on every floor. All right. There we go. And we can get back this drag. The fact that it has Burnout 6 is actually good now. So, you're dying, but not by a whole lot. You could go at the bottom in front, maybe? And now we could do Force Contamination to deal damage to the boss. I like that plan. We can't do a ton of damage to the boss, but we can do some. Let's do the Echo Break up here. So Force Contamination does some damage to the boss because it has the melee weakness for this turn. This turn only. But that is enough to have it take some extra damage. Wow, a lot more extra damage than I was expecting. I'll take it. 
We got the Molten Encasement and Tombed Explosive back again. I like getting that one back. And we got Deep Offering back again. All right. So, this one goes down here. We can be pretty careful about what we play. Memories of the Melted is in our discard pile, which means when we play Deep Offering, we will draw it. That is good to know. Leave one Ember so that we can play that card. Burn out one. We could play that here. That could give these stealth again. We could play it down here, give these units all stealth. I like, I like giving all these units stealth. So if we play Revenge of the Damned down here, we could then play Ancient Resonance and do a bunch of damage. Let's do it. Kill the back one. Do Ancient Resonance to do damage to all of these units. We drew Memento Mori, that's unfortunate, but Deep Offering might draw it again, because it's going to be in our discard pile. We drew the Vengeful Shard. Sad. Anyway, Memories of the Melted means that we can play all of these. We can deal little bits of damage to multiple things. I guess what we want to do is do as much damage as we can on this floor so that our units hit the boss rather than rather than the other things. So first of kin, which which attack value is yours? I think it's the 65. Yeah. So the 65 is your attack value. You are quick, so you're hitting that one. That's not great. Well, Ancient Resonance takes care of that in a jiffy. So let's do... Let's do a tiny bit of damage to you. Then let's do Power of Knowledge on the boss. And Ancient Resonance to kill those units and deal some more damage to the boss. Make sure all of the damage here goes up against the boss. Okay, now we're going to the Relentless phase. No idea how we're going to do as the Relentless phase here, but at least we have Stealth 2 at the bottom. Okay, we're not winning. We're currently dying on all floors. That's bad. The bottom floor is the place that we could most likely come back from this. The shelter is good. Adding burnout five would mean, well, actually that doesn't help you much. Okay, let's start with Wicked Blaze. Reform a unit. And it needs to be this one because this one gives more, more, what is it called? Stealth to our units. So you go here in front of these units. Now we're winning. Let's play the Vengeful Shard so we don't take the one damage on our Pyre. And we win. This is probably the closest victory that I've had of all of the victories that I've had, but we still win on Covenant rank 9. And this was the first time playing with the the Wormkin's Exiled Champion. What is he called? I forget what he's called now. The Echo Right. Echo Right is his name. Excellent. Quite happy how that went. Even though it was a struggle. I I enjoyed the struggle. Only one damage taken from that one Vengeful Shard that we didn't stop. All right. That was very close. I really don't know what happens at the very end there. Oh, a Vicarious Remnant. Reach level 5 on the Melting Remnant. Excellent. Covenant rank up. 
Covenant rank 10, apply Ember Drain 1 to the first friendly unit played on the top floor each turn. Ick. That's bad. Ooh. That, that particular Covenant rank up really hurts. Card frame unlocked. You can now enable this card frame. Okay. And we Divine Mastered 14 more cards. Yes, let's keep putting up the Divine Masteries. Wormkin levels up to level 7. Keeper of Echoes. Inspire, add 1 attack and 1 health to friendly units. To all the friendly units on the floor. That's quite nice. Inspire though, what's Inspire? Trigger when you gain Echoes on this floor. Once per echo. Nice. Unearthed remains. Consume, gain one extra space for for echoes, and gain one echo. That's conditionally very good and conditionally useless. Wormkin level to level eight. Perfect insanity. Extract six. Apply minus 666 health. So basically, you spend six charged echoes to kill one unit. Or I guess you could hit the boss really hard. I, I like that. It also is not spell damage, so I think that spell shield doesn't stop it. Ho ho, I like it. Carving Koruska. Koruska? I don't know what that is. When a card with Extract is played, gain one Ember and one Echo. That's quite strong. The Melting Remnant make it to level 5. We get Mortal Entrapment, Attuned, deal 25 damage and apply Daze 3 to an already damaged unit. The fact that it has to be already damaged really hurts the card, because you would want to do that against the back units, typically. Still good, though. It's just harder to play. Encased Ember. Gain 5 Ember when a Tomb unit dies. I think that's a unit type for the Melting Remnant. I haven't paid too much attention to which ones are Tombs. And Little Fade. The Exiled Champion for this clan. You can now choose to start runs with its champion. Alright. Our win streak increased to 6. And here are the Mastered cards. And of course, Divine Masteries. So, we... Can I click here? No. I can't see what these what these cards are directly right here, but the clanless card collection, I have mastered half of the ones that I found, but I haven't found I've only found half of them too. So Imp Cup tracks wins Covenant ranks one through nine. Now that we've defeated Covenant nine, we're probably not going to go back there for a while. So the win streak six is going to stay. New personal record, melee weakness applied is 48. Previous best was 33. That's really because one of my random starting cards applied 3 melee weakness, so I was forced. I was forced into playing melee weakness. <laughs> Alright, great run. Next time I will be playing with another champion that I've not played with. Don't know which one yet, but let's see more next time. In this run, the Melting Remnant gain a level to level 5, unlocking the last of the Exiled Champions. The Wormkin are the first clan to make it to level 8. I Divinity mastered 14 new cards, 13 of which had been mastered for the first time. I now have Divinity mastered over 100 cards, and the Train Steward was actually one of the cards mastered. Starting on the left with cards, I am highlighting Echo Right, the Exiled Champion for the Wormkin, whose abilities gave me an excuse to try out the egg units of the Wormkin. Memories of the Melted was a standout card enabling some truly powerful turns, and it does break the 10 battle threshold in this run. 
On the right, the constructed explosive just makes it to the 10 kill threshold. Note that I don't count when it explodes, only when my units or spells kill it. The Silent Marksman was a frequent enemy this time. I registered one-fourth of the 44 total kills during this run. My efforts to add direct damage spells and artifacts made defeating these stealthy enemies much easier. For artifacts, I took the advanced prototype at the beginning of this run, and it served as the only reason that I kept train stewards in my deck throughout the entire run. Hell's Banners breaks the 10 battle threshold. It gives Ember after you play two units in the same turn. Since I played a lot of monsters in this deck, the banners had their chance to shine. Not shown here, the Retribution Combat Trial, which adds spikes to enemies, is the first trial that I've activated more than 10 times. That detail is in my tracking sheet, link in the video description. New episodes every Saturday, and thanks for watching.